praise the name of the Lord. I thank God for his faithfulness and mercy upon our lives today. I welcome you to share the word of God together with you and God is going to bless us. I have a message for you. My message is entitled The Grasshopper Mentality. Now the Bible says the book of Proverbs chapter number 23 verse number 7 that as a man thinketh so he is. And so the thinking pattern of every human being affects whatever they do in this life. Our life surrounds entirely on how we think. Our mindset is very much important. Our attitude in life can make us to be great and can make us to be small, can make us to be rich and can make us to be poor. The mind of a human being is very much important. And so for that reason, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Numbers chapter 13, verse 32 to 33. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had spied out unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that, is, that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we, are, that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there, were, there was, there we saw, sorry, the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come in the Nephilim. And we were in our, in, in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Now the children of Israel, Moses sent 12 spies to go and spy the land of Canaan. God said, remember, I'm giving you a land flowing with milk and honey. Now the reason as to why God sent these people to spy the land is to energize the faith of the children of Israel. Because faith comes by hearing and probably by sight. What we see, what we hear. And after hearing, then we go and see. And then we confirm our faith or we strengthen our faith. So God told the children of Israel, I'm giving you a land flowing with milk and honey. And the Bible says they went to that land to see 12 of them. Now the Bible says, among us the twelve, ten of them had a bad report. They came back and said that they are sons of Nephilim, they are giants there. When we looked at ourselves and them, we were compared with a grasshopper. We were so minute, we were so small before their eyes. Nenu la mugu linasema kwamba walipo ona watu hawa walishtuka, wakaogopa, na wakaleta report mbaya kwa wana wa Israeli. Wakambia kwa basisi tunaka kama panzi. Mpendwa, maisha ya ya tunayo ishi, ya nahitaji mtu ambaya kona imani kubwa, na mtu ambaya na muamini mungu kwa jia kipeke. Imani yako uijenge, na uifanyie kazi, iweze kubadilisha maisha yako. Your mentality or your mindset is everything. And so you need to deposit a lot of strength in your faith. Because faith worked great things in our lives. And so for that reason, it is important to energize your, your faith every now and then. Wana hawa kumi na wawili walileta ripoti mbaya. Wakasema kwaba kwetu, kwetu sisi, tulikuwa tunaka kama panzi. We were so minute, we were so small. But these people were giants. So it is a grasshopper mentality. It is a kind of a mentality that forgets so fast the promises. And number two, forget so much what God has already done in the past. And then you start dwelling on the little challenges that you face on the way today. Especially with what is happening in the world today, there are so many challenges and so many issues in life today. Na watu wamefika mahali wamekosa matumaini na mungu. For heaven's sake, tumepata shida nyingi katika ulimwengu kubwa kushida ugojwa kama corona. Tumepata na mabomengi. There is a time that AIDS was a threat to the whole world. Na magojo megini ambawa methriten maisha ya watu. And we overcame. We stood strong to where we are today. If God did it yesterday, he can do it today. He can do it tomorrow. Forever he will do it. He's a God who maintains a promise. Mungu waliabia wana wa Israeli ni tawape anchi. Ilio na maziwa na asari. Lakini mtu wabaya kona the wrong mindset. Ama mtu wabaya kona a grasshopper mindset. A minute mindset. A mindset that does not believe in God when trouble comes. 
ni wale watu ambao wanamwamini Mungu and they celebrate God's doings wakati Mungu ametenda miujiza lakini wakati ambapo hakuna muujiza unaonekana they fail in their faith and so they start focusing on the troubles of this world and so for that reason i want you to understand something that the children of Israel their faith shook because of the bad report that was brought to them but i thank god because of Caleb and Joshua two noble men ambao walikuwa na imani ambao Mungu alikuwa anatarajia wawe nayo the faith that god desired to see in these people walikuja na wakaambia wana wa Israeli the land is flowing with milk and honey and god has given us a promise we wanna go there and overtake the land in the name of jesus wapendwa there is something i want you to understand that god has given us a promise na anything that god has spoken unto us that is going to give it unto us it will surely come to pass it will surely be given unto us in as much as we believe and as we trust in god denounce a little faith denounce you know a petty mindset i want you to believe in god in a mighty way i want you to trust in god in a great way believe god with all your heart and with all your mind and it shall be well with you wherever you shall go and you know that you do in the name of jesus and so god was very bitter you can imagine watu zaidi ya 1500 ambao walitoka misri wakielekea kanan wapewe shamba nzuri na mungu lakini ni watu wawili tu peke yake ambao walikuwa na a different mindset they had a different spirit joshua and caleb ndio waliingia katika nchi hiyo all the others of the others of these people ambao walitoka huko watu wazima waliangamia waliharibiwa maisha yao katika jangwa na wakakufia huko because they had a grasshopper mentality they were intimidated they feared because of little faith jesus said all men of little faith and i hope you are not that kind of a person in life ambaye imani yake ni haba mpendwa jenga imani yako hata kwa vitu ambazo hazionekani as much as it is god's promise in our lives build your faith every day and believe in god the bible says all men might be liars but god will remain to be a true god he will never lie Numbers 14 verse 1 to 2 and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried and the people wept, wept that night and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation said unto them would that we had died in the land of Egypt or would that we had died in the wilderness they started complaining when you have this kind of a mindset you start murmuring you start doubting you start complaining Though you know the promise so well you heard of the promise very well but when you have a grasshopper me- mentality or mindset then it means that you see the obstacles somebody who has this kind of a mindset will always see the obstacles they will always see the impossibilities they will always see the unproductivity they are people who do not see anything good in this life you remember my fibo shed the bible says when he approached the palace of king david he said oh king how do you consider me a, a dead dog a dead dog this is a man with a promise he is a man from a loyal family he is a man who is favored by god but he had the wrong the wrong mentality he has a grasshopper mindset And so he will be defeated in life not because God is not mighty but because he had the wrong mindset. On the contrary, you remember the story of Mordecai in the Bible and Esther. Mordecai is a foreigner in the land. And number two, you remember Esther is an orphan. But the mindset in these people was so superior and so great they had a divine thinking, a divine mindset in them. And Mordecai believed in this girl. Akamwambia go to the context and I want you to become a queen. Though you are an orphan, but you have the ability to become a queen. Hallelujah. I thank God because of this kind of a mindset. And I pray that God may give you a divine mindset. Come out of a, a cocoon of a grasshopper mentality. That when an obstacle comes, when a challenge arises, you write off all your dreams you write off all your aspirations you write off all your visions it cannot happen to a servant of god we live at the confines of faith every day
Philippians chapter number 1 verse 6 the Bible says being confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ the God who started the good work in you and me is going to perfect that work is going to establish you is going to give you victory is going to favor you is going to establish you he who started the good work in you is going to perfect it to the last minute and so no matter the obstacles because the devil will always fight what we do. But I want you to believe and to trust in God that he is faithful, he is mighty. He is going to guard your life and to be a blessing unto you. Habakkuk chapter number 3 verse number 2 the Bible says, O Jehovah, I have heard the report of thee and I am afraid. O Jehovah, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. Habakkuk, a complaining prophet. He is crying to God. And he's telling God, God, I have heard of so many things you have done. I have heard of so many miracles you have performed. Oh God, revive your works in our days. Do it in this season. Let it happen in our generation. Let it happen in our eyes. My brother, my sister, I want you to have a great faith. I want to tell you today that there, I want to give you like five reasons as to why people are defeated in life. And they embrace this kind of a mindset. Number one, collective sin. When people have a collect, collective sin, collective sin means a sin that involves everybody. Like now you remember the, time of, the times of Joshua. There was this man called Achan who stole things that were defiled, things that God has said, no, you should not touch. And so God killed so many people during this time because of one man, Achan, who took something, possessions, that God had not allowed for them to touch. Number two, personal and confessed sin. Like Ananias. He had a sin he committed by himself and he refused to confess of that sin. So he was defeated in life. He died. Number three, a compromised priesthood. A compromised priesthood. That one means um, a, a, an altar that is, that is compromised. A sinful altar. Like the times of Eli, the servant of God. He, he, became, he, he raised a family a family that was compromised. His sons were sinners. And so this family could not win. They could not get anywhere in life. They were defeated in life. Number four, breaking of the vows. Anytime you break a vow or your covenant with God, then you're about to be defeated. You fail miserably in your life. And number five, foolishness. Like the foolishness of a man called Abner. The Bible says he died like a fool because of mingling with the people after finding grace and salvation in his life people of god i want you to understand there is power deposited within you by god that is meant to strengthen you and to make you to go to another level of life and so my message is simple run away from a grasshopper mentality believe and trust in god have big vision a big vision in your life let your dreams be big let your vision be wild habakkuk god told habakkuk Write your vision in bold letters that even the runners can see as they race. So let your vision not be shaken by either obstacles, impossibilities, and productivities, or the coloring or the murmuring of people in this life. Believe and trust in God, and your life will never be the same again. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this one today. And I pray that Job is going to give strength to your people. To give them your favor and your mercy and your kindness to rest upon them. Strengthen them that they may believe you. I overcome in them the mentality of a grasshopper. And Father, I give them a divine strength, a divine mindset that they can overcome all the struggles of this world. And they become more than conquerors. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you and the Lord favor you. Shalom. Shalom.